Hi, this is Joe Fleming from Airbrushing Wood. I sell airbrushes to the woodworking community. I focus on Grex airbrush products, airbrushes, airbrush accessories, a standalone compressor, and some air tools for woodworkers to use. This video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the anatomy of an airbrush so that you understand how it works. What you see here are two identical airbrushes. This one fully assembled and this one disassembled the way I would take one apart for cleaning. This will allow you to understand the pieces that are the normal operating pieces that you consider when working on an airbrush. Before I do that, however, I'm going to switch to a different view to give you an idea of an airbrush. This picture shows the anatomy of an airbrush in an illustrated form. What you see here are, um, I'm going to start with the O-ring in the middle. It says O-ring seal. Every airbrush has a seal that when the needle goes through, it seals, as you see on the picture, the left side or the front end of the airbrush. I call that the business end. That seals the wetness or the wet material from the dry side, the back end of the airbrush. Never pull the needle out when you have liquid in the wet side or in the front of the airbrush because it can leak back into the air valve and cause it to get gummed up, glued shut, and require replacement. It's very difficult to clean the back end of the airbrush compared to the front. Moving then from the O-ring, I'm going to start at the back end of the airbrush and work forward. You see a gray piece called a handle that simply unthreads from the back of most airbrushes. All it does is give you a better balanced tool and protects the needle and the operating parts on the back of the airbrush. Once the handle is removed, you'll see the needle protruding from the back. You'll see a needle chuck. Just like a drill chuck, it tightens down on the needle and holds it in place on the plunger mechanism, part of the needle spring and the plunger. You'll see there a piece called the needle spring. It's part of the assembly that pushes against the trigger. Moving forward, you see a trigger lever. Sometimes this part is attached to the plunger mechanism. Sometimes it is standalone. It translates the rocking motion of the trigger into lateral motion, pulling the needle back and forward. The trigger itself has two motions. It goes up and down, and that activates the air valve, allowing air to flow into the airbrush, and it rocks forward and back, or starting from the forward position, it rocks backward against the spring and allows fluid or paint to go out the front of the airbrush. On most airbrushes, when you pull the needle out, the trigger and sometimes the trigger lever can come straight out of the airbrush. They're not held in by anything other than a small um, loop of material in the trigger that um, allows the needle to pass through. On the front of the airbrush, working back, you'll have two parts. This labels them as one, but there's a needle cap separate from a needle, uh, not from a nozzle cap. The needle cap is on the front. It usually threads onto most airbrushes. With Grex airbrushes, it is magnetic. Then the nozzle cap, which protects the front of the needle, and is the mechanism or is the uh, component that mixes air and paint together to form atomization. Behind that is the nozzle, and as you can see, the needle running all the way through. Airbrushes are either top gravity fed, as illustrated here, where the paint is in a reservoir or cup at the top of the airbrush, and it flows down into the paint channel and out the front, or it can be siphon feed, fed, where it gets sucked into the airstream from below. I personally recommend top fluid or top gravity cups 
uh, for most woodworkers because the scale of what we paint is pretty small. Let me switch now to a view of the airbrushes themselves. And back to the cutaway material. So this is a complete airbrush, totally assembled. This is the airbrush disassembled. Here is the needle cover. They're either cone shaped or they are, sometimes they have little prongs. It protects the needle from damage. So in this airbrush, the needle protrudes through the nozzle cap and is protected by the needle cap. If you were to drop this airbrush and it were to land on the front of the airbrush, it would damage the needle beyond repair more than likely. But the nozzle cap or the needle cap protects it. The nozzle cap is where the paint and the air mix together. The tiny little piece here is the nozzle. Believe it or not, that is considered a rather large nozzle compared to some manufacturers. But this nozzle is a 0.3 millimeter nozzle that allows paint to flow. This is the airbrush body, and I have not disassembled the trigger or the trigger um, rocker push assembly right here, the lever. Um, if I did, the trigger would just come straight out, and on a Grex airbrush, that piece also comes out. Down in this part of the body is where the air valve is. It includes a spring, a plunger, and seals for the air. So when you push the trigger down, as I'm illustrating there, it pushes down against that plunger and allows air to flow up through the triangular piece here and into the neat, uh, nozzle cap and mix with the paint. When you pull the trigger back, that's when the needle pulls out of the nozzle and allows paint to flow past the tip of the needle into the nozzle cap mix with the air and make your cone spray pattern coming out. This part of the airbrush back here, I'm going to move it up closer to the camera, shows you the needle chuck. I'm going to take the glare off there if I can a little bit. And you can see the, knot, the needle chuck is typically a little knurled knob right here. This piece right here is the plunger assembly. It houses the spring. You can see that moving in and out. And the plunger that pushes against the trigger. This part of the airbrush is called the handle. Again, it is simply a part that protects the back of the needle and gives you a more balanced grip when you hold the airbrush. And finally, the back of uh, professional grade brushes typically have a needle travel limiter. By turning that knurled part clockwise into the airbrush, it limits how far the needle can travel back and therefore limits the amount of paint that comes out the front. If you're painting fine lines, that's a great control to have and I highly recommend it. On Grex airbrushes, the paint reservoir, the paint cup, is removable, so it makes it easier to clean. And of course, it has a lid. And if I get up a little closer, you can see the hole there. The hole is a vent hole to allow air to flow into the cup when paint comes out the front of the airbrush so that you don't have it create a vacuum. On almost air, all airbrushes I've ever used, the caps are simply pressed on and snap off. They are not threaded. A lot of airbrushes, the cup is not removable, so you have to clean down into the airbrush through the cup. When I do a, a detailed cleaning of an airbrush, this is the amount of disassembly that I use when cleaning. And it takes me, depending on how dirty the parts of the airbrush are, five to 10 minutes to do a deep, I call this a deep end of day cleaning when I take the brush apart this amount. If you have any questions about airbrushes, airbrush anatomy, 
um, or parts or service, please give me a call or contact me through my website at airbrushingwood.com. Thanks for watching.